Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary and to our uh, podcasts. We are now uh, celebrating uh, the great high feast of the Trinity, which is uh, the grandest of our doctrines. Uh, it, it, it's the essence of who God is, uh, three persons and one God. Um, it shows us that God is love, that, it, that when we, we worship God, we enter into communion with God, the God who sent his Son for our salvation, that Son who sent his Spirit, and then that Spirit who draws us in through Christ that we too might call God Father. And so the text for today, for Trinity Sunday, is, is the Great Commission. And uh, we begin with the 11 disciples. Um, we know that uh, uh, Judas is no longer there, and Matthew's making that point. The Gospel of Luke and then Acts will make the point that the 12th would have to be added later, Matthias. But that's not our concern now. There are 11 disciples, and they are going into to Galilee. And this is our Lord said, go to Galilee. Uh, before he died, he said, I'll meet you in Galilee. Um, so they went into Galilee, and they went to a mountain. So our Lord is, uh, this is where our Lord likes to reveal himself, as he did on the Mount of Transfiguration. Reminded again of Moses in the story of the Exodus. But he went to the mountain and then he, our Lord uh, commanded them. He gave them a like This is almost like they're soldiers. He gives them their marching orders. What are the 11 to do? And I do think this is important because um, the Great Commission is first given to the apostles. And it's given to the apostles for the sake of the church. This commission is then also given to ministers today for the sake of the church. And uh, so this he's speaking specifically to the 11 now. And now it, it's interesting, this is, the Great Commission is so exciting in a way, but there is, uh, it's interesting because seeing him, they worshiped him. Now that's a good thing. In the Gospel of Matthew, the Magi come and they worship the baby Jesus. And uh, it, it's, it's quite marvelous. And, but now the disciples, they, they, they worship him, which is, but again, this is the part that we don't maybe emphasize, but some, or but they, it's hard to say, but they or some doubted. So even at the resurrection, um, and I think it's important to us to remember, lest we fall into despair, that um, faith and unbelief often reside in the same heart, and we know it in our own lives. I believe, but help my unbelief. And the apostles, sometimes they can't believe for sheer joy, for disbelief in the Gospel of Luke. So they really do believe, um, but a little doubt. I mean, and I think that that's fair to say in our own. So in our, that's why we go to church every Sunday to, to strengthen our belief, because we do know it's true, even as we have our doubts. Well, this, this text is given for our assurance. The apostles' witness is given for our assurance that our doubts can be dispelled. So Jesus, having come to them, he elalesen, it spoke to them, it's almost preaching to them. So he, 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 he gave a sermon to them, he spoke to them, saying, uh, Edothe, given to me, all exousia, all authority has been given to me. What authority? In heaven and on earth. Well, remember in the Sermon on the Mount, it says, the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, our Lord was the meekest of all, and uh, now all authority is given to him. Now, you might say, well, as the Son of God, all authority was already his. But there's something different now because the Son of God has become man. It's the man, Jesus Christ, who sits upon the heavenly throne. It's the man, Jesus Christ, who is now the Lord of all. It's the disciples, the one who called the disciples friend is now the Lord and has all authority in heaven and on earth. And this is important uh, as the church maybe is entering into, certainly in, in places, it's entering into places always of persecution, of difficulty, of strife. Remember that our Lord does have all authority. Now since we have authority, we've been, like we're, we're talking here, especially about the apostles. What are the apostles? How will they wield that authority? 
what will be their sword? Their sword will be the sword of the Spirit. These soldiers will go out with. Going, therefore, what are you supposed to do? You're going to make disciples of all the nations. Now, um, maybe it's not as stunning to us now as it, as it was then, but it certainly was because we remember how the gospel began. The gospel began, Jesus was the Christ, but he was the son of David and the son of Abraham. He was the king of the Jews. But the king of the Jews is now the king of all. And he says, make disciples of all the nations. Uh, if the Jews will reject him, and of course some will believe, the disciples were Jews, they believed. But go to all the nations, for the Lord is the Lord of all. Uh, the seed of Abraham now is going to be a blessing to all the children of the earth. And instead of thinking of earthly begetting, how were you a Jew? You were a Jew by birth and then by circumcision. But they said, we're children of Abraham, but we're children of the Heavenly Father. And now there's a new begetting, and that will be in baptizing. Baptizing is the new birth. Baptizing them into the name of the Father, and here was our Trinitarian tie, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. They share Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Spirit is Lord, and yet there are not three Lords, but one Lord. They share this name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is our Trinitarian God. And this, in, through baptism, we enter into this relationship. We enter into the relationship where the God is now our Father. We pray to him, our Father who art in heaven. We, along with Jesus, we are in Jesus. We are children like Jesus. We are sons and daughters of Jesus. And we are filled with this Holy Spirit. No one can say that Jesus is Lord apart from the Holy Spirit. Prayer itself is a Trinitarian activity where we, in the Son, and by the power and the breath of the Holy Spirit, are able to God, call God our Father. This is the great Trinitarian blessing of being called into the communion and the love of God. And now the disciples are given their further command. Teaching. Well, this is what we've got to do. And the Lord knows our, our world needs teaching now. And gos the Gospel of Matthew is a great teaching gospel, the way it's set up. It's almost like a catechism. Teaching them to observe what? All things. So uh, there no, there's no gospel minimalism here, no gospel reductionism here. All things that I have commanded you. I mean, having read that, you think all things, what have I commanded you? What For us, I think that means let's go back and read Matthew again and again and again so that those words become part of us that we're able to teach the people. And teaching takes time. Um, now there comes a promise. And behold, ego methumo. Um, I am with you all of the days, even unto the end of the age. And here really you have, in this verse, verse 20, you have all of the Christian life. It's what we do in our church services. Um, in our Bible studies, I suppose, as well, which are really part of the church services, which is to say, it, it, we're always teaching the people and we're doing it within the context of their baptism as children of God and we're doing it as we lead them to communion. And this is the last part, I am with you always, even until the end of the ages. I am with you always, I am with you all the days. Uh, this is the way the Gospel of Matthew begins. There are two things about our Lord that you must know according to Matthew. He shall be called Jesus. Why? He will save his people from their sins. You will call him Emmanuel. Why? He is God with us. So also now we see. He will save his people from their sins. Having died, he gives us the power of baptism, which washes away our sins. And when our sins have been washed away, we are invited into communion with God. And when we are invited into communion with God, which is our Lord's Supper, this is where we experience the communion on a weekly basis, where the body and blood of Christ becomes ours. As we come into communion and receive the body and blood of Christ, our Lord is our Emmanuel. I am with you. This is the bread of presence that we eat. And we are with the God who lives, loves us. 
and we are living in his presence and we are living in the joy of the Trinitarian life. So it's a marvelous text and it's a reminder to us of our mission today. We've got a lot of work to do teaching the people, but what great joy it is because we do it as children of God who want to enter, that get to enter now, even now, into the communion of the God who loves us. So thank you for being with us on this Trinity Sunday, and I pray blessings upon you.